got on the radio station and tried to uh, say that because they, when they started singing, they, they almost sound like Boys to Men. Uh, what Boys to Men did when they first started singing, they were one of the first groups, not the only group, actually Christian group did it. But what they did was they, they, they raised vocals above the music. Before then, back in the day, when you heard the slow cut music or whatever, the music was, was the emphasis because that creates the atmosphere. And then you would hear the vocals. But Boys to Men raised the vocals above the music. So Commission actually sang like Boys to Men. So they were like, okay, this is, this is a cult because they didn't sing like the old time gospel. So they played the music backwards. When they played the music backwards, it was worshiping God. They didn't do it on purpose. They just were singing to worship God. But somebody played the music backwards, and, it's, and it was glorifying God. Subliminal message. This is a subliminal message. Um, and what they call it is, uh, they call it flash flood. So marketing people do it all the time. They have flash flood you, so it comes. And something just went in you, and you didn't see it. And the same thing happens with music. It's called flash flood. Video, flash flood. And then you're like, oh, that was sweet. And all of a sudden, you're paranoid. You have, you have anxiety. You're irritable. All of a sudden, you can't control lust. You just can't. You don't know what's going on. But you, you, yeah, it, was just, it was just placed in you, subliminal. But it sounded good, though. It sounded good. You, you was getting down. You know, it sounded great. Subliminally, it was getting in you. And guess what? You can, you can take all the subliminal messages you want. But as a pastor, I'm letting you know it's out there, and you continue to do it. Do, I tell you all the time, everybody in this room, everybody, kids, everybody, except for the little younger, younger kid, but the teenagers, everybody should be happy. Every time I see y'all, y'all should be smart. Because you're doing what you want to do. You're not doing what God tells you to do, in some cases. So if you're doing what you want to do, you should be thrilled. Right? So, so I can talk about today's music, and uh, we talked about it last week, we'll talk about it here in the next service, Proverbs 1, where it says, uh, oh yeah, I got I to gotta end this. Proverbs 1, where it says, uh, God spoke to you and he reproved and corrected you. He says, whoa, whoa, you're going too far, don't go there. Oh, no, come back, come back, come back. And he was mocking. So God says, when your craziness comes, I'm going to laugh at you. When the craziness of hell starts coming, I'm laughing at it because you, you mocked that when I told you you're going outside the lines. You ran outside the lines, so since you ran outside the lines, you must have wondered what was out there. So now you're getting up early praying. He's, he's like, it's, that's funny to me. It's like, why are you praying in? I already, I, you're praying to get out of something that I told you not to get into. So he's not going to laugh at it because it's a joke to me. It was a joke to you when I was trying to keep you from going there. So since you know what you're doing, Deal with this thing in pain. That's the key. So right now, this is God's word. It's being shared to you. Do what you want to do. Deal with what you're going to deal with. But everybody should be happy. You know, I should see smiles on your face. No complaining. Stuff start going crazy. You should be like, oh boy, this is wonderful. Just what I pray. Okay, but if you want something different, you have to do something. Um... All right, the key is we're going to have to embrace the Holy Spirit in our lives, but the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit doesn't flash flood you. He sends you information as a gem. Um, there's no cover. The difference with the Holy Spirit, he, he can't help you without your knowledge. You have to sign off on what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. The adversary, he don't want your signature. He wants to deceive you. But the Holy Spirit is a gem. You have to embrace him. You have to accept him. You know, so if you if you just totally avoid him, he's a gentleman. He's like, okay, go ahead. Like I do. If you guys tell me you're going to do something, I'll be like, okay. If you got your mind made up, I'm like, oh, okay. I'll pray for you. I'll still be weak. I'll pray for you every day. But I'm like, all right. But if you, really, if you ask me what you should do, I'll give you the consideration. But if you don't ask me and you do it, I'll be like, all right, cool. That's what you want to do. I'll be a gentleman about it. Because you care for because then it'd be like, pastor trying to control you, right? And then the line right everybody. Like, he's trying to control me. He's trying to run my life. He's trying to run your life. Tell me what the word says, now you make a choice. And, and, and but the whole time, I'd be like, oh, oh, Lord, that's not good. That's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. There's going to be some stinging pain on that one. I could have helped you with that. So, Holy Spirit's the same way. 
All right, uh, we must hire the Holy Spirit as our discernment, as our discernment to police our subconscious. Discernment is the key to police our sub subconscious. We increase our discernment, the subliminal message try to come in, and you'll pick up something. You'll have an unction from the Holy One, and you'll know something's trying to penetrate my heart that doesn't belong there. Alarm system will go. So that's why we have to absorb our relationship with God and absorb the relationship with the Holy Spirit. And now, now. Again, I'm going to end with this. The Holy Spirit, we're supposed to be a temple for the Holy Spirit. So, so he can't dwell with fornication and lust with us. So if you're going to absorb yourself to fornication, lust, and all these crazy things, the Holy Spirit can't dwell. So if the Holy Spirit can't dwell, you have no guards protecting your heart. So the adversary go, ooh, Coach Clay, I can just go in and infiltrate and do, do, do anything I want to do. So it's our responsibility to guard our heart with all diligence, and the Holy Spirit is the key. And we'll finish the rest of this next week. Father God, we lift you up, magnify, exalt you. We thank and praise you for time in your word. Uh, we thank you that your word is quick, Lord, uh, is sharper than a two-inch sword. It's in us, dividing us, showing us where we are, showing us where we need to go. We thank you for these lives that they're thirsting for you, thirsting to spend time with you, thirsting to fellowship with you, thirsting to line their lives up with your word and your will. They'll absorb your will, speak out your will, live out your will, and impact others with your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I think that's enough for uh, first service. How's everybody doing?